leads. That's kind of the official count, uh, which you know you never really know for sure. Um, but and then uh, President Nixon gave his uh, uh, silent majority speech, which you may have already heard of, where he basically said, um, you know, I'm he's he was appealing to the silent majority, the people who weren't out protesting against the war, to support him. And uh, if you give me next slide, um, that really that is what got covered. Um, the he had all of his efforts to neutralize the anti-war movement were what dominated the news. So Vietnamization, when it was covered at all, became conflated with bringing troops home because that's what Nixon did. He said, this is Vietnamization, it's working so well, I'm going to bring troops home. So really, um, it created a perception that Vietnamization was a um, euphemism for we're, we're quitting the war. So it really never gained traction as a change in strategy or as a change in the, uh, the fortunes of uh, Vietnam War. And then uh, the, uh, uh, the, the it really, there was very little change to public opinion. When, uh, when President Nixon came into office, there was a surge, in, uh, uh, a surge in support for him and for the government's Vietnam War policy uh, to 68 percent. However, uh, by the end of December, Vietnamization really had little, little, little or no effect. Um, the last uh, kind of major Vietnam surge, if you will, the major dramatic uh, change in strategy was the Cambodian in incursion. Um, we started uh, uh, surreptitiously, I uh, say we, the United States, started uh, surreptitiously uh, bombing Cambodia, and that didn't stay a secret very long. In uh, May 1969, New York Times broke the story. Really no impact at all on public opinion. Uh, and as you look at, if you as you look beneath the polls, what you find is that people were not concerned that we were doing too much in Vietnam. Um, the public sentiment that came out comes out of the Gallup polling from the time is that people thought we weren't being hard enough, that we weren't being forceful enough, that we were being uh, uh, too, uh, we were not being heavy-handed enough, uh, which is kind of counterintuitive to the historical narrative. Um, the uh, so, but after the bombing became, um, after it became, uh, became um, public, it, it still continued. Um, we were having, uh, by this time, the uh, interdiction of supplies had been having an effect, and Vietnamization had been having an effect to such a degree that um, there were, the North Vietnamese were having a very great deal of trouble getting supplies from North Vietnam into South Vietnam. And that's really um, where the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which we've all heard of, which is the trail that kind of winds through Laos and Cambodia west of uh, Vietnam, really, uh, really came into play. Um, it had always been there, but it really became a major artery. They started bringing in engineer equipment, t turning this little foot trail into highways, um, really uh, making it big. And then they started building these very large bases in Cambodia just across the border. Um, from uh, from Saigon, only about 60 miles from Saigon. So um, you've got these huge concentrations of uh, North Vietnamese supplies and soldiers right across the border. And uh, Nixon knew that pretty soon he would have Vietnamization and his withdrawal plan will have drawn troops down so much that they would not be able to, to protect South Vietnam anymore. So um, about in May, of 1970, uh, there was a coup in uh, Cambodia, and the uh, uh, Minister of Defense took over uh, Lan Nol and uh, said, gave the North Vietnamese 48 hours to get out of this country. <laughs> I mean, we were talking about a million Vietnamese says, you've got 48 hours to get out of my country. And of course, North Vietnam, Vietnam had a huge investment, so they, uh, they attacked the new government. Um, so. President Nixon saw this as his opportunity, his justification for a strike into Cambodia. Um, at first, he uh, at first the South Vietnamese attacked uh, with U.S. air support uh, from helicopters and from uh, uh, fixed-wing aircraft. But then, um, a few days later, we invaded with uh, U.S. armies, uh, with U.S. military forces. So um, that uh, and like just days before he did this knowing that it was going to create an uproar because there was only 38 uh, percent uh, in favor and you know in polls there were only 38 percent of people in favor of uh, going into Cambodia 
uh, when they did their private polling. So uh, he, right before this, he announced that he was going to bring 150,000 soldiers home, kind of this trading, uh, trading troop withdrawals for public support. So um, if you give me the next slide, please. Um, what happened is there was an uproar, um, especially in college campuses across the country. Uh, we all know about Kent State, uh, but there was also a, uh, a smaller uh, riot in Jackson, where two, uh, uh, Jackson, Mississippi, where two, two more uh, people were shot. Um, colleges, uh, colleges all across the country, this really was a national um, upheaval. And uh, colleges around the country uh, shut down, even in the Midwest, which had not really seen a lot of uh, protests besides like Wisconsin and a few other places. Um, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, there was also uh, in May a, uh, a demonstration uh, uh, in Washington, D.C. where 100,000 people kind of came on, on the turn of a dime and uh, began protesting in uh, Washington, D.C. <coughs> but um, really what's striking when you watch the, uh, the television coverage of the time um, is how dismissive of the anti-war protesters at this time, and I'll talk a little bit in a minute about what kind of how that turned, but um, how dismissive the journalists and anchors were of uh, protesters. Um, and this is a quote um, from uh, David Brinkley, who was one of the anchors at uh, NBC. Um, the, uh, so really there, there, was a, there was a slight dip in June uh, right during the uh, right uh, or in May and June, right after the Cambodian incursion, but by the end of the year, there had really still been no change in public support for the war. And uh, just to wrap it up, before I kind of you know wrap up the historiography, I've covered the three Vietnam surges, but you know what happened? Um, uh, the next year, um, South Vietnam began their first real independent operation, uh, which was uh, an incursion into Laos, Stenerdik, the uh, um, the North Vietnamese. And they ran into stiff opposition. This is uh, South Vietnamese soldiers hanging off the skids of U.S. helicopters, you know, desperate to be evacuated. They really got mauled. And that really, uh, that really was a damning con condemnation of the uh, um, of Vietnamization, because this was the first real test of Vietnamization that didn't work. Um, right after that, uh, there was a Lieutenant Kelly, who was the guy responsible for the My Lai massacre, which you probably heard of. Um, he was uh, convicted, and the president, uh, because of really public opposition to him even being convicted, um, he reduced his sentence. Uh, the Pentagon Papers came out, which was a, um, a collection of uh, papers from the Johnson and uh, Kennedy administration, kind of uh, calling into question the, um, the justifications for the war. And uh, the president tried to block it, but the courts overturned that. And then uh, really what turned public opinion was the... Um, was the veterans, uh, the Vietnam veterans against the war. Uh, we all know about this speech from John Kerry, that's John Kerry speaking before the Senate. But uh, really what turned it was you had American uh, troops who had been in Vietnam, in Washington, protesting to end the war. And whereas before the anchors had been very, very dismissive of protesters, they took that very seriously. And it got a lot of coverage, and it really is what turned public opinion. Um, between just January and May, uh, there was a 10-point drop, and for the first time in the Nixon administration, uh, half, over half of people uh, did not support uh, presidential policy in Vietnam. And then, uh, uh, really, more importantly, uh, by June, 58% of people said the war in Vietnam was immoral, and that was really the end of the Vietnam War. After that, uh, uh, the president was uh, forced to uh, really accept all the terms that they had rejected for four years, uh, the North Vietnamese Army would stay in South Vietnam after we left, which really spelled the disaster for South Vietnam. And really, the only thing, when you look at the polling, the only thing that really saved the Nixon presidency and got him reelected was him going to China and uh, all of the, pu the public, pu the public uh, praise of that. You can next slide. So uh, what, you know, coming back to kind of the original point, what does all this say about um, the Afghanistan surge. Uh, you know, I guess in favor of the surge or uh, to, uh, you know, possibly uh, uh, positive omens for the surge would be that, uh, that, you know, the speech was very clear that this was not about 
Um, this was about winning the war in Afghanistan. So the president was making a clear assertion, uh, much as in the Iraq surge and that speech, that he wanted to win the war. And uh, he was also extremely candid about, and uh, Stanley McChrystal was extremely can candid about the conditions in the war. In fact, uh, General McChrystal was so uh, candid with the press that um, that got into Rolling Stone and he ended up getting fired and uh, General Petraeus ended up taking the taking over the fight. But uh, they were very frank about the, con the, the um, setbacks in the war. And, uh, but if you look at um, the Vietnam surge examples that I've talked about, really two cautionary notes about how they announced the surge that I think maybe we're seeing the result of now that the surge is over and we're beginning to uh, reclaim those soldiers that we've uh, sent over there, is first that uh, in the speech itself he said they're only going to be there 18 months. And really that set a timetable that um, set a uh, expectation in the minds of people that the war is winding down. And we're really kind of seeing the results of that. And uh, also that uh, um, Vietnamization um, it was, you know, much like in, uh, much like in Vietnamization, rather, um, uh, he talked extensively after he announced the surge about how he was going to um, get us out and what the, uh, what the uh, exit strategy was. Um, so with that, um, that's all I've got. Thank you very much. Perfect.